It's Friday night. Thanks for spending your movie night, pizza night, family night, whatever night. End of the work week night with me and putting Higgins back together. Tonight we're going to finish up the dash and gauge installation and uh, show you how the lighting came out and the, hmm, the newest problem that has arisen from all that. So I'm just thankful for everyone that watches. I hope you get something out of this. I hope you, if you're doing this on your own car or another British car or any kind of car, actually, I hope you, uh, I hope this is educational for you and helps you avoid some problems. So thanks for watching. All right, I almost touched this up. Yeah, the paint is still a little bit pliable, but I don't know if you can see in there, it's pink. The touch-up paint has got a pink tint to it because it is eaten through the glass. So, note to self. Solo cups are good for a lot of things. Barbecues, birthday parties, guys like that. As a paint cup for spray paint that you're doing touch up with, not so much. So there you go. This channel is super educational on the real struggles of life. So, I really want to touch that up though. Hmm. Let me think about this. All right. So, I just sprayed it directly onto a cardboard box, made a puddle, and then dipped out of that. So let that dry while I get another O-ring and stretch it out some. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, well, this one still has the spacer ring in it. Let me show you what this looks like. So it's got this I'm sure in 1957 it was flexible, pliable. But now it's hard as a rock, but that's okay. I just it just has to not it's starting to crack. I don't know if you can see it right there. In the bottom but just needs to not let the glass rattle. That's its whole purpose. So this one will be a lot more better. Let's clean the lens. I want to say that this was the first gauge that I took apart. So it kind of spoiled me. I'll show you here in a second. I'm looking at the old illumination window. Oh yeah, it's got that. It had some kind of wear spot in it. Oh, don't touch it. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. So it has a scratch part in the face. Actually, you know what? This may be the one out of the originally out of the oil pressure gauge. Because it had a puddle of dried oil in it. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, yeah. You can see good. So cleaning it up, scratched it up in here. Maybe there's a way to get those scratches out. Let me see if I got another lens. I do have some extra gauges. Let me see what I got. Okay, so I had another lens from an extra gas gauge I had back there. So that is much nicer than the one with the wear on it. But this. Nope.
these replacement I don't know what you call these things I don't know where my scribe went little grommets that go behind these gauges so they don't rattle in the dash. They're square cut. So if you know how rubber bands twist, these do the same thing. So it takes a minute to get them arranged properly so they sit nice. Okay. There we go. Yeah, see how I don't know if you can see how the little rubber band here is twisted. There we go. Got a little flat. There we go. I don't know if you can see that. I'm using the selfie camera on the phone, so there's no zoom or any of that mess on there. It's fixed view, so that's the only way I can see what the actual view is. Look at our alignment. There we go. Okay. The only one left is oil pressure. See how it twists. It's got to work out the twist. So everybody's flat, flush. Go. Our other bracket. Thumb nut. Let's see if some of my extra gauges have any. Well, there it is. Now it fits flush. Everybody's happy. I just got to hook up the oil line, which I can do because now the gauge is on the bottom. It's not a problem. So let's get the thing secured. And then I guess we could be. I could use the key to start it now and its own wiring instead of this run box, which was the goal. I mean, it's always been the goal, but that was the motivator behind getting the instrument panel done. It's going to be tough. The top ones are tough. Get this one. I don't have the same access on the other side. Oh, let's see. Rolling with the solid gold wing nuts. sausages in here to do this. Tell where the Hold on. Quite a bit has happened. 
since I turned you off a second ago. So I figured out this is the ammeter that needs to be in there. This one, remember I shocked myself on and we arced out. Well, this bulb style for illumination, I don't know where this thing came from. I think it's from a later um, Triumph. Because that bulb style doesn't exist anywhere else on this vehicle. Whereas we're all used to the cloudy windows for lighting. Actually, this one's clear. So we're going to go to this one, put it in. We're going to use our old crimp on terminals. The, the barrels off those are going to be our ferrules in this in these joints because it's a set screw which is also indicative of the rest of this instrument panel so let's get after it so the beauty of the mic that you see clipped on my pocket is it does way better audio because it's consistent it always stays with me the bad side of it is when it dies you don't know so what's happened here is we swapped out the ammeter and now we're testing the lighting because I had it almost installed and then realized, oh, I got to see if the lights work. And so what's going on here is just testing out the instrument lights for at night. The interesting thing about it, if you notice how well those LED bulbs behind the center dash instruments work <laughs> as you can see they light up the footwell the perimeter of the dash everything including the gauges but i don't know if they're it's actually too bright to drive the car at night now i'm just looking to see why the speedometer isn't lighting up so the bulbs are all good and i'm reinstalling them and I've come to realize that the speedometer isn't grounded. There's no case ground. And it gets that from the speedometer cable, which is not currently installed. Once I put a ground to the case, they'll light up. And you'll see that here in a second. All right. So here's what we got. Huh. As soon as we turn on the headlights... Or even the side markers, it looks. No, this is headlights. Yeah. Oh. Oh, here we go. Side. Head. Okay, as soon as we turn on the headlights, that happens. Now, if we ground out, put a ground to the case of the speedometer, that light comes on, which I'm pretty sure the speedometer cable is its primary source of a ground. I can run a ground to the securing stud. That's not a big deal. Look at this light leaking all around. The... They got those booming LEDs in here for illumination of these gauges. They do, it does a good job. But yeah, this, I don't know why that's doing that. So, figure that out. May just be something touching. Well, that's interesting. Okay. Wow, look at that. How bright that is back there. Those little LED, two LED bulbs. All right. 
So uh, yeah, let's fire up some lights and let's look at this for a little bit. So now you see the new dilemma. But I haven't been able to look at it or deal with that at all because tonight I fly the red eye to Florida to start construction of the Garage Mahal. If you've watched any of the other videos, right now there's just a slab in my mother's backyard. But by next Wednesday, there will be a 30 by 60 metal building. Home of the for the Galaxy and Higgins eventually. So that happens next week. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe and all that YouTube legal stuff. Thanks for watching.